So I served in the, uh, in, in the White House Council of Economic Advisors under the George W. Bush administration. And this is essentially the argument that was used by uh, the folks in the administration at that time for why we're actually not as concerned about the uninsurance problem. And I'll let you draw your own conclusions about how you feel about all, all of this. But it's useful to sort of understand how different folks are thinking, as I find that typically among my students at, at Cal, and probably reflective in this audience, there are more people uh, who are here because they care about the uninsurance problem. And, but we, we like to make sure that we understand how you know, other folks are thinking. So, but if you take the 46 million uninsured in 2007, of those, about 6 million of them actually are already on Medicaid. It's just that when we calculate our usual numbers about uninsurance, it's these sort of surveys someone calls up during dinner time and they say, do you have health insurance? And they say, well, I don't know, no, go away. And about 6 million of them we know from administrative data actually had health insurance even though they said no on the phone. Now it may be that they actually don't know that they have health insurance, which is you know, a problem, or it may be that this is just you know, statistical error. So that would suggest, well, really they're only um, you know, about 40 million or so uh, uninsured. And then there are another 4 million or so who are actually eligible for current programs such as Medicaid, but they haven't bothered to sign up. So either they don't know that they're eligible, or they, they just haven't gotten sick, and so they haven't bothered to because we've created so many hoops making it hard for people to sign up and stay signed up. Okay? But, you know, if we think, well, we already have a, a system out there, um, you know, so now we're down to 36 million. Of those 36 million, about a quarter of those are immigrant populations. Now, this was a time when the Republican Party hadn't jumped on the immigration bandwagon yet, as immigration being something that uh, is sort of being embraced by, by the party is, is happening very recently. And so all non-citizens were sort of lumped into a group, be they uh, you know, long-time long -time green card holders, be they sort of recent uh, uh, documented immigrants, or be they undocumented immigrants. They just said, well, if there are immigrants, then they're not our primary responsibility. Okay, so this was the attitude. Of the remaining, about 10% or over 300% of the poverty line. And the argument was they should take care of themselves, right? We don't need to have a big tax program to pay for health insurance for these people. It's over 300% of the poverty line. That's actually over median income, uh, roughly. Uh, uh, so you would be... You know, taking someone who's in the top half of the income distribution in the U.S. and saying, well, we need to somehow subsidize them. And, and you know, within the administration at that point, they said, well, no, that, that isn't the highest priority use of, of our dollars for the social program. Of the remaining, we, there are about 5 million for childless adults. The same thing, the argument was these people should be taking care of themselves somehow. Now, again, forgetting about the fact that a good chunk of these have sort of mental health problems, maybe homeless, substance abuse, et cetera. So, well, they ought to take care of themselves. So what we have left is about 10, 11 million who are the hardcore sort of uninsured who the administration at that time really said, this is who we need to take care of. It's about 3% of the population. We don't need a $1.7 trillion bill to take care of the 3% of the population. Right? So that was the argument they said is, we need to figure out ways of attacking the healthcare cost growth problem first, and that should be our sort of top priority. Yeah. 